How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video. In this video, we are going to be talking about the patter object, and the patter object is honestly one of the most useful objects in Max MSP. It can do so, so much that I don't even know if we're going to be able to fit everything in this video, but we're going to start with the absolute basics. We're going to take it step by step. I'm going to do my best to make it easy. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first, we got to double click, type in P-A-T-T-R, which is the pattern object, and it says it provides an alias with a name data wrapper. But that's just one of the many things that pattern can do for us. Uh, we're going to start with the first example, which is actually in the help file. You'll see it here when under the bind tab uh, in that help file. We're going to talk about this bind feature of pattern and the way that works. The bind to feature, there's two ways you can do it. Um, you can create an object and this object, um, you can bind to this object with this pattern object. If you give this object, whatever it is, in this case, it's a floating number box. If you give that object a scripting name, which if you press command I to open up the inspector, that's also this I icon over here, and you scroll down to where it says name, you'll see that it has this option scripting name. And if you hover over this I for a little extra info, you'll see it says sets the patcher scripting name, which can be used to address the object by name in patter, scripting messages to this patter and the JS object. So those are a few different objects that use scripting names. And as it says, patter is one of these. Um, Basically, with this bind to feature, you can think of patter as a send and receive object but that just works based on scripting names of objects. So if we gave this float number box that we are clicked on right now a name like floaty, now we can go into the patter and we can say at bind to floaty. And now this patter object is bound to this box. This box could be anywhere. It could be all the way over here in this side of the patch. No patch cords going into it. We could create a second float number box, patch that into the inlet of the patter object, lock our patch, change this value, and you'll see that our floaty number box is also now changing to update. So that's kind of what, I'm, what I mean when I say it works as a send and receive, but based on scripting names. That feature alone is useful for so many things, but it could go even one step further. You don't have to bind just directly to the object, but you can bind to the object's attributes as well. So if we wanted to, we could say at bind to floaty, put in two colons, and then give an attribute of our float number box. In this example, we could say BG color, which will be background color. And now it is bound to the background color attribute of our float number box. So if we send it a list of an RGB value, like something out of a swatch, you'll see that we are now changing the background color of that float number box. And that is just one of the few things that Patter can do. Patter is so much more than just a send and receive object. Patter, as it said, when you type in, when you start to type in the object name, provide an alias with a name data wrapper, you can give the Patter object a name itself. We could call this um, values. I don't know. We can create another float number box. And if you see this middle outlet here, it says bind to connection. So you can drag a patch cord from this middle outlet into the inlet of any object. And now this patter object is bound to this float number box, just like it was up here, except because we're using this patch cord, we don't necessarily need the scripting name. Although you will notice if you click on the, this new float number box and open up the inspector, it has automatically given it a scripting name when we made that patch cord connection. So this scripting name is now number, this patter is values. And if we create a second object called patter storage, which works very, very well with patter and allows patter to do most of its features, we can lock our patch, double click patter storage, and it's gonna open up this window where you will see we have this weird name here and then the name of our other patter object values. Um, because we did not actually give a name to this first patter object, that is its default name. But you can see that it has our color value in it saved and that this values here, um, also it says zero because this float number box is zero. If we change that and double click on patter storage again, you'll see it has in fact updated. So patter storage basically remembers the values of whatever pattern objects are connected to. 
And this works with a lot of different objects. We could have um, some kind of like multi slider in here. I'm just going to copy and paste one in from another patch. And that, you know, that's like 50 sliders or something. I, I forget exactly how many sliders I picked. 40 sliders. So that's 40 sliders. And we could create another pattern and call this slidey. Connect that middle outlet to it. And if we double click on pattern storage, you'll see slidey is in there. We have that these values stored in the data and we can send the message store one to the pattern storage object and that is now saved and stored in that pattern storage object we can now change these values to something else something like that maybe set that to red set this to a negative number and then we'll just say store two and send that message to the pattern storage. And now that we've clicked that, these values have been saved to the second storage slot of pattern storage. And if we want to go back to the first one we, we save, we can send the recall message. So we'll say recall one, send that to the pattern storage. And once we click on that, there you go. This float number box went back to that purple color. This went back to 111. And this is the uh, setting of our slider that we had it at. If we want to go back to that second one we saved, then just send the recall to message. And there it is. And we could just jump back and forth between these now. And that is super useful because what we've essentially just created now for ourselves is an entire preset system. You can set different states of your patch very specifically, like this is on, this is off. And if everything is connected to a pattern, and you have this pattern storage system, you can save all of these presets and they will always be there for you. And you can then recall them at any time. You can even save these files as an external file and then load it into pattern storage to be recalled when you open up this patch again. If I was to close out of this right now, you'll see uh, this is gonna say, you know, you, do you wanna save this? Sure, we'll say save, um, we'll just save. But then I get the second dialog window which is the save for our pattern storage and it saves as a json file this is that external file for pattern storage you can choose not to save this if you don't want to uh, if you don't actually want to save the presets that you made for whatever reason but if you did want to save these presets you go ahead save that file i'm going to reopen the max patch that we just had and we're going to just send a read message to the pattern storage which is how we read in external files I'm going to find that file, which is right here. And now that that's right in to the pattern storage, I can click recall one, recall two. There it is, recall two. It went to the correct values. So again, another way that pattern can be super useful, but it doesn't stop there because not only can we recall between these preset states, but we can also interpolate between them and fade from one state into the other. All you have to do is send the recall message with the numbers of the states you want to interpolate between. So in this case, it'll be one and two for us. And then a third value, which I'm going to signify using the variable dollar sign one, and we'll patch that into pattern storage. And then this value, this third variable is just your interpolation value. And it's going to go between zero and one, zero being all the way in the first state and one being all the way in the second state. So if we patch that into the recall message, and slowly, well, we're, yeah, let's reset it back to zero. So this is state one. And then we're slowly going to go up towards one in this float number box. And you'll see that our slider is slowly morphing into that state. And our float number box was slowly becoming more red. And now that we've gone past one, we are 100% in that second state. We can go back down and just interpolate between these. And that is useful for so many different reasons. One of them actually being what we're doing here with this multi slider. We are getting a nice slide between all of these values in this rather large list. Like I said, this is 40 sliders. So there's 40 values in this list. If you wanted to, you know, fade, if you wanted to set up some kind of like fade, like maybe what we're doing here with this color, that's just three values, but still 
if you wanted to have it fade between one color and the next and you weren't using this pattern storage system, you would have to unpack your RGB value. You'd have to put a line object in there. You'd have to copy that for each value. And that would get so much more annoying if you're trying to do it with this multi-slider object because it's got 40 values in it. So you'd have to copy and paste your line object over 40 times and unpack a list of 40 objects. That's ridiculous. Why would you ever want to do that? Um, but this recall method allows you to interpolate from one state to the next and you could just use a single line object. You know, we could just put line in here and say pack F 1000 for one second, patch toggle through, patch that into that and then click that toggle and in one second we'll fade from one value to the other. And that is so much easier than unpacking this entire list 40 times over. And that is pretty much the absolute basics of everything I wanted to show in this video. But like I said, there's still so much more that we can do with this pattern object. So if you found that helpful, uh, please remember to like and subscribe because that's how I know you found it helpful. And if you have any questions, please leave that in the comments down below, especially, especially if you want me to keep going because there is still more we can talk about with pattern. I just don't want this video to get absurdly long or complicated. So if you would like a part two to this pattern video, please let me know about that as well. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.